Hey guys, welcome back to Renaissance Man Media. Today I'm going to be doing the Avatar 2 Way of Water review. Avatar 2 I saw three weeks ago at this point. Uh, I was on a date with a girl. Uh, that was the last time we ended up seeing each other. Uh, quick quick little story. Yeah, she just wanted to call it off. And I was like, alright, that's cool. Like, Fine with me. Just wish I wouldn't have wasted the money. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping this in here. <laughs> but uh, during the movie... Like, I don't know, I was I was thinking I was feeling it, and then I get done with it, and then I was like, that's three hours that I'll never get back. It's a weird weird that that works that way, but uh, basically the story is that uh, Jake Sully, uh, played by Sam Worthington, he's living his life, he now has a family on Pandorum, and by the way, I didn't see Avatar 1, like I didn't rewatch it, it's been probably close to 10 years since I've seen Avatar 1, and... Uh, I, it seems like not a whole lot's changed. Anyway, uh, they start out pretty quickly. I think within like 20 minutes, maybe faster than that, that uh, the humans are back, a.k.a. the sky people, whatever. Uh, the humans are back. Um, they want more resources this time, but they don't say what at first. And, um, <sighs> okay, well, if you don't want spoilers, I would say uh, just don't watch this because there's going to be spoilers. Okay, you've been warned. Three, two, one. Okay. So they bring back Stephen Lang's character, the bad guy from the first one. His body's, you know, broken, whatever, but they retcon that, well, actually, you know, they made an avatar for him and all this stuff. Look, I liked his character in the first one. I thought he was an interesting villain, but to just redo it all the... I don't know what James Cameron was thinking making this movie because to sell people that there's like, oh, I have enough for, you know, like four, five, six, seven avatar movies... Dude, you didn't even have enough for two. Like, this second movie is basically the first movie all the way through, except for it takes place in water. Because uh, Jake Sully's on the run, and the spot that they were at, I don't know what they call it on Pandorum, but the forest area, him and his family were on the run, and they were causing the other, um, uh, I can't think of their name, the, the, the locals, I can't think of their name, the species. Uh, they had to move to a water area to basically like run away from the humans that were after them uh because naturally Stephen Lang's character his avatar i guess the first thing mission that he has is i gotta like go get jake sully um yeah this movie was three hours long i think it might have even been three and a half i don't remember exactly but um i can look it up real quick i felt like i like i said i would never get my time back and uh, that's that's what kills me. Um, three hours and 12 minutes. Good Lord. The first one I really liked. Like Some people weren't as high on the first one. They make the joke that it's Dances with Wolves meets Fern Gully. And it is. And the second one, it's it's not the Fern Gully aspect as much, but it's just like humans are bad and, and these people are evil and, and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Um, but we've already seen this movie. And... The only thing new you could add is that Jake Sully now has kids. And I'll be honest, those kids are not interesting. And they're not people that you care to follow. And apparently James Cameron's wanting to move forward where one of the sons is like the character you follow in the next movie. I'm like, dude, go for it, I guess. I won't be seeing Avatar 3, uh, no matter how good. The, like, don't get me wrong, the special effects look great. Like, I, I give James Cameron and the the special effects guys, I give them all the credit for how the movie looks but that alone that was enough to get me in the butt in my butt in the seats for the first movie because i was like i don't know much about the story but it looks great so yeah but if you rewatch avatar one and you watch this movie i'm assuming the special effects are actually going to look pretty similar so i don't think we've progressed with our special effects all that much um i, I already kind of got into spoilers so i'll say another one cool thing was that the resource they were going after this time was not uh, I don't even remember what they called it, like unobtainium or whatever they said. Uh, this time they kind of explained there's a resource that's in like uh, whales that are in, you know, Pandorum or living there. That basically if you suck it out of like their brain membrane, a human being, it can like keep them young. Like it doesn't, the human body won't age after taking this stuff. And I'm like, so that's interesting. And obviously that pays high dollar because that kind of makes people immortal to a, a certain extent. But aside from that, there was nothing interesting in this movie. The climax was drawn out, uh, took forever, and then there's no satisfying payoff. Um, 
I got to say, they, they shoehorn in that uh, Stephen Lang's character, like I said, I don't remember what his name was, Colonel whatever. Uh, he had a son, apparently, which we never saw in the first one, and they just add that in. They're like, oh, yeah, you had a kid, and now your kid got raised by the um, the locals. Well, I can't think of the alien species name. I, like I said, kill me. I don't care. But that kid looked like Takashi 69 so I couldn't take him seriously. Uh, I don't know who decided that that's what his look was going to be, but, yeah, every time I saw him, I just thought of Takashi 69 But this movie's not interesting. Uh, if I had to give the movie a rating, I, I would – oh, by the way, the performances – no one does anything great. Like, it's just standard voice work. And I don't know what you want to say. Like, the... the, the It's not green screen, necessarily. But uh, motion capture. The motion capture work they do is great. But the what they did, the acting, the lines that they were given, I don't know. But there was nothing spectacular, nothing too interesting. So, overall, if I had to give this movie a rating, I'd give it a $5 bin. Which is, you know, if you saw it... In Walmart's five row bin, you hadn't seen it before. Sure, give it a shot, see if you like it. But that's about it. I, like I said, the story is so underwhelming, so disappointing. And a movie doesn't work without a story. You can have a you can have a super simple story, and if you you know just if the special effects are great, the action's great, the acting is great, then you can pump up a, a just a very very basic story. But this movie, like I said, they just copied the first story. It's like Okay, humans are the bad guys. Again, uh, you just have kids this time, and it takes place in water, and that's the only difference. And they even brought back the exact same bad guy, which I just didn't find necessary at all. So that's it, $5 bin movie. Uh, that's all I got to say. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you have thoughts or comments and you want to let, let me know that I'm wrong, go for it. But I can't be the only one that thought Avatar 2 was just lackluster. All right, that's it. Bye.